intro cycle is a normal operation of any heat pump. In the winter, when the coil temperature reaches the freezing level and there's moisture in the air, frost bands will appear on the outdoor coil of the heat pump. The picture on the left shows the normal frost bands that you will see on an operating heat pump during the winter. On the right, if your heat pump looks like this, we may have a problem here. In this video, we're going to examine some issues with defrost cycle. One of the first things that you need to do when installing a heat pump is to consider the location. You need to check for proper drainage so we don't ice up the sidewalk. When the outdoor coil defrosts, water will drain off of the heat pump, and if it drains onto a nearby sidewalk, it can cause a hazardous situation. Also, a heat pump should be raised above the snow level so that snow will not hamper the defrost of the coil. Another thing you want to watch out for is water draining from a roof onto the heat pump. Also, you want to protect the heat pump from icicles that may form off the roof overhang. I have seen cases where the water running off of a roof will go directly into a heat pump and cause it to become an ice ball. Also, we have seen icicles break off and fall into the heat pump and puncture the coil which re releases the refrigerant and, of course, causes a major problem. Many homeowners like to build their own cover for their heat pump. In many cases, this is okay, but you need to make sure that they are not restricting airflow and causing other problems that are going to affect the operation of the heat pump. There are covers that are made to hide and protect heat pumps that are not approved, and then there are some that the manufacturers do approve. So anytime that you or a homeowner want to hide or protect a heat pump with some device, you want to make sure that you are within manufacturer specifications for clearances around the heat pump and that any device that you put on the top of a heat pump is approved by the manufacturer who built that heat pump. There are basically two defrost algorithms that are used on most modern heat pumps to accomplish the defrost mode. The first one is a timed defrost, a timing circuit with a coil temperature sensor that after the accumulated compressor runtime has been reached, the coil temperature sensor is checked. If it shows the coil needs to be defrosted, it will go into defrost. If it shows that defrost is not needed, it will reset the timer and go around for another time circuit. The second defrost algorithm is the temperature modified defrost. This method shortens or lengthens the defrost interval based on outdoor temperature. When heat pumps first came on the market back in the early 80s, the Paragon mechanical defrost timer was the device that most manufacturers used to accomplish the defrost cycle. Today, most manufacturers use a solid state defrost control board to control the defrost cycle on a heat pump. On this board, there is a pin that can be adjusted for the 30, 60, or 90 minute timer that counts the accumulated compressor runtime. In order for this defrost board to work properly, it must be wired correctly so that the defrost timer is powered and operates whenever the compressor is running. This is a very common mistake that a lot of technicians make because boards have changed over time and some of the wiring has to be modified to make sure the timing circuit is properly wired so that it's powered up. The outdoor coil temperature is what drives the defrost cycle. The temperature of the coil tells the defrost control board that the coil is cold enough to freeze up and so it needs to go into defrost. This coil temperature is sensed by two different devices. The first one is on the left, which is an open or closed uh, clicks on switch. It's normally open 
and closes when the coil reaches a certain temperature, which signals the defrost board that it needs to go into the defrost cycle. The thermistor on the right is another device which is used, and it is a 10K resistance thermistor, which senses the temperature of the coil. Both of these devices need to be checked when you are troubleshooting a defrost cycle to make sure that the clicks on switch is closing when it should and that the thermistor is within range and sensing the correct temperature. By using the speed up pins on the defrost board, you can force the heat pump into a defrost cycle. On some heat pumps, you will need to short the terminals of the coil sensor to initiate a defrost cycle. This will be done on heat pumps that use the clicks on switch and not the thermistor. Reverse cycle defrost is the most common method of defrost on modern heat pumps. By reversing the refrigerant cycle from heating to cooling, the refrigerant flowing through the outdoor coil is warm, thus defrosting the outdoor coil and removing any frost and ice that is built up on the coil. A reversing valve is used to reverse the cycle on a heat pump. If the reversing valve is not working properly, it could affect the defrost cycle and not allow the heat pump to defrost. Make sure the reversing valve is switching modes correctly. Many manufacturers use a model plug with its resistors to tell the board what kind of unit it is operating in. If the resistance of these resistors has changed, it may be telling the board that it is an air conditioner and so the unit will never go into, into a defrost cycle. A few years ago, I had a situation where a technician had changed the board, changed the defrost sensor, changed everything that he knew to do to get the defrost cycle to operate, and still the unit would not go into defrost. And this is where we found that the resistors on the model plug were out of range, and so the model plug was telling the board that it was in a air conditioner and not a heat pump, and therefore it would never go into defrost. Once we got the proper resistors on the model plug, the unit went immediately into defrost. So let's recap what we have learned in this video. First of all, consider the location of the heat pump for noise, snow, and defrost drainage. If the solid state defrost board has been replaced, make sure it is wired correctly so the timing circuit is powered. Make sure the timing for the defrost is set correctly. Check to make sure the defrost switch is opening and closing at the required temperature. Check the outdoor coil and outside air thermistor to make sure they are within acceptable range. Verify that the reversing valve is switching properly. And make sure the model plug resistors are within range. Go to arefco.com for more videos. Like, subscribe, and check back every week for new videos.